So when I was a freshman in high school, I had a very odd teacher whose name was Dr. Williamson. Who used to teach my class civics. He was a special fella, not like other teachers. In the school I attended, teachers were often not close to students in a social way. They were simply there to teach and that only. Dr. Williamson liked to keep in contact with students and so he decided it would be a lot easier to do so if he had a Facebook account. He started adding people on Facebook from our school and eventually started talking to them. He often posted weird stuff on his wall and commented weird things on the app. For example, one time he posted the song, Straight Outta Compton, by NWA, and wrote, All they say is the N-word. I don't get why people like this song. Of course, some students commented and asked him why he had used the N-word so freely. He removed the post and apologized, blamed it on being drunk. This was only the beginning. He started talking to students, mostly boys, and he managed to find some students' numbers and started sending them texts randomly. He would send stuff like, Do you need help with homework? You can come over to my place and I could help you out over a glass of wine. And this he would say to teens that were younger than 18 years, so according to the law they are not allowed to drink. And he pretty much offered alcohol to minors. Remember, he's a civics teacher. He should know this stuff by heart. It's also morals, for God's sake. Anyway, he never sent me a text, but he always sent some weird texts to my friends. Later on, he finally decided to talk to me. This was a couple of weeks after he had started contacting students like this. He would speak to me on Facebook Messenger chat. He would ask me things like, how do you get girls? Do you have a big wiener? Do you often get to sleep with girls after your shows? He asked this because I'm an actor in the school play, and I found these messages highly disturbing. They became worse, he started saying things like, you must be such a stallion in bed. You are probably really good, and enter the rabbit hole with me. Come on, I'll take care of you. I had no clue what the fuck that meant. That was not everything. After a while, things started to get out of control. He started asking me out to go with him to the clubs, I was under the age of 18 at the time, and he said he could get me into the clubs with no ID, and all would be well. Of course, I said, no. He then apparently got pissed at me and decided not to speak to me much after that I had turned him down a few times. He started talking to one of my dearest friends instead. It ended up with Dr. Williamson sending my friend a picture of his ass with the caption, please, take me from behind, and take me hard. Mind you, my friend was 17 at the time whilst Dr. Williamson was around his early 40s. That was taken to court and Dr. Williamson got his little sentence. He was to do community service for a little while and then he was to pay my friend some fine. That was it. Dr. Williamson still works at the same school today and is totally accepted. I find that very wrong, people, very wrong. A man like that should not be able to get in that line of work again. Things could have gotten much worse than this. By the way, I live in Sweden till the age of going to a club is 18, whilst the age of buying alcohol from a liquor store is 21. I know, weird laws. That was my story. Sorry if it was a bit long. Tried to keep it as brief as I possibly could. I hope eventually he does get fired. I find it so weird how a bunch of stories here are about creepy music teachers and they jog my memory about this one teacher. I'll just call him Mr. John. So, in sixth grade I had this music teacher he seemed all normal a bit rude slash mean but he was easy to talk to and to joke around with it's weird how at first I never had a creepy vibe off of him. I remember on the first day of music class instead of us choosing instruments he just looked at us and said flute or trumpet and we had to choose one of those. I remember he didn't give this girl two options he just said you're playing the trombone I know you're good at playing big things, and just smirked but none of us got the joke because we were a bit young. 
We loved him cause he was cool and he was a new teacher but he always stared at young girls in an inappropriate way. Once my friend got marker scribbled all over her and she went to ask him if she can wash it off, she had it on her cheeks, and he said let me lick that for you and he grabbed her face and licked her cheek. I turned to my friend and at the same time, we both had a stunned looks on our faces. He heard and laughed and gave us a creepy smirk. In summer he let us have a break and all the guys ran to the field outside to play and the girls did arts and crafts inside. As soon as the guys left he took out his wheelie chair and told us to sit on it so he can push us around the school. Another time we had a school talent show and classes had to perform and we were dancing to a country song and we had to dress up like cute country girls and we brought mini purses with us and my friend shared hers with her older sister and the teacher came over grabbed the purse and was looking through it and he grabbed out pads and like always did that weird creepy smile like he knows it's wrong. Some of his old students came to visit and they had shopping bags, one of the girls had Victoria's Secret and he said what's inside and she said bras and undies and giggled, he opened the bag and pulled out her lingerie and it made her uncomfortable and he just kept looking through her stuff. He would have special girls, who were me and my two other friends, and he would want to help us out a lot. He was too kind to us, special girls, he once gave us a perfect grade for an assignment we did even though it was late and we did it wrong and it was poorly presented. Fast forward to two years I went to a different middle school and my friend told me that he was secretly fired because he took one of his students to Starbucks and he would treat her special. At Starbucks, he bought her food and made out with her. He pulled back from kissing her and she ran off crying because she was too embarrassed to tell anyone. Some witnesses who saw this found out he was working at a school with young children and they told the principal. I grew up in a small town in New Jersey. I swear it was the most closed off town on the planet, I mean there were maybe 400 people in that town. My graduating class had around 60 kids, including myself. My class was small yet close. Everyone in the class was all friends, we hung out all the time, we knew everything about each other. As I said before my town was small, everyone knew everyone. Everyone knew everyone. My parents were Russian immigrants, there wasn't really a high population of Russians, but there were a few. There wasn't really a specific race associated with my town, there was a bit of everyone, Italians, Russians, Greeks, Mexicans, Chinese people, Korean people, Indians, Peruvians, etc. I ended up going to church school, and regular school, with most of these people. The teachers were great, there wasn't a single teacher I didn't like, except one. It wasn't that I didn't like her, it's just that she creeped me out, I think she meant well, but she just, kept popping up everywhere. I know it's a small town, and I couldn't go anywhere and not see someone I know, but she came up unusually often. I had this teacher in my sophomore year, she was my world history teacher, which I ended up having the first period so I would always start off my morning with her. I remember the first day of school, I walked into her class and she shook my hand, I was taken aback at first, seeing that most teachers don't do that, but then I saw her doing it with other students which made me more comfortable. My classes are 45 minutes long, but since I had her first period, I was with her for an hour, my school gives kids time to eat some breakfast in their first period class, and let the teacher take attendance. On the second day of school, she shook my hand again, which had surprised me, but I was more accustomed to it now, except, she only shook my hand that day, I decided maybe she was just happy I was the first one into the class, yeah that makes sense right? She was just happy to see a student eager to learn. On the third day, she shook my hand yet again, but this time it was uncomfortably long with plenty of eye contact. The fourth day was the day I decided to ask her why she was doing this, and only with me. I raised my hand, um, Ms. Donald, why do you keep shaking my hand? I asked her just as the bell rang, Ms. Donald said, one day, you will see, this will all make sense that's when she started popping up in my life more often. One day I was at the mall with my boyfriend, and we saw her there. My boyfriend is a year older than I am so he was in her class the year prior, 
I asked him if she had always been this weird, but he said she was a kind and loving teacher who acted completely normal. She approached us and we had a short, awkward conversation about school. After that, my boyfriend and I went to my house. I live in an apartment building with minimal parking, so we had to park kind of far from my house. While we were walking to the building we saw her yet again, she was across the street just, staring, at a house. I think it was her house, but I don't really know. I mean I want to, well actually, no I don't. My boyfriend and I quickly went into my house. A few hours later, my boyfriend was still at my house, I looked out the window and I saw her staring at my building. She wasn't looking into the window or anything but she was just staring. I told my boyfriend to come take a look outside but then she started walking away. The following Monday, she didn't shake my hand, she made a joke about, long time, no see, because she had just seen me two days earlier. Now she was acting more normal, maybe she was just nervous, I mean it was the first week of school, so it makes sense right? I still kept seeing her more than I normally would, but at least she wasn't staring at my building anymore. It was about halfway through February and she started acting abnormal again. I started seeing her even more frequently, and in weirder places, nonetheless. I saw her in a restaurant on my mother's birthday, I saw her while I was going to my sister's bachelorette party, I even saw her in the dressing room of a Ross. She was even staring at me in class now. Some days she would only call on me to answer questions, which I guess was good because I was good at the subject, but it was still pretty freaky to me. Even the kids in my class started to take notice of how weird she was acting, she would offer me her breakfast, not just like a little snack or something, she'd offer me, her muffin, bagel, croissant, and coffee. Of course every single time I declined for, obvious reasons. Eventually, she started to get annoyed when I declined her offer. She started to put stuff on my desk before I'd get to class, she'd tell me that it was a waste of food if I didn't eat it, or she'd tell me that someone has to eat it because she is going on a diet. There was one time when I did accept her offer. It was just a small little muffin top from a little cafe around the corner from my school. I skipped breakfast at my house that morning, I had woken up really really late. I ate the muffin top. At first, I felt fine but then I started feeling nauseous. I ended up going to the nurse around the third period, and the nurse called my mom. The nurse asked why I was feeling this way and I told her it was because I didn't eat breakfast. I now wonder why I didn't tell her the truth, it might have saved me in the end. Ms. Donald ended up going on vacation for a month, the best month of my life. For a little while, I forgot what it was like to be in so much fear. Ms. D ended up never coming back from vacation. She ended up moving to Iceland, which is where she was on vacation. She never told the school why she did this, so her students were always kind of puzzled. By then it was early June, the school was almost over, and no teacher cared what you were doing anymore. I was relieved I didn't have to worry about Ms. D anymore, but she always kind of stayed in the back of my mind. I did forget about her for a little while, when I was 27 I ended up getting married to my high school sweetheart, and we had two kids, a girl, and a boy. I love them both so much. My kids aren't even in school yet, they can barely walk. One day I found myself scrolling on Facebook and I found a story about Ms. D. The headline read, Marissa Donald, an ex-high school history teacher on trial for the murder of one of her former students, I scrolled down the page to see that the story was about the murder of my old best friend. Lisa. Lisa Senez, my best friend, was murdered, by none other than our former teacher. I closed my laptop, I would later read and watch coverage of the trial, and called my husband. He came home from work immediately. I cried into his arms for hours. I don't know why I was so sad, I hadn't spoken to Lisa in years. I think I was so sad because I guess, I know it could have been me. I read in the article that she had been stalking Lisa for years, trying to get to me. She was trying to find more information about me. She wanted to kill me. She admitted that in court. 
I'm sad to say I'm glad she got to Lisa before she got to me. She had kidnapped Lisa and tortured her for information about my whereabouts. There were videos of it. Of course, when Ms. Donald said my name I got involved in the case. I went to court and told the judge everything that had happened to me, obviously, I didn't get anything as bad as Lisa did. They showed me the videos of Lisa, getting gagged, bound, and whipped, and getting boiling water poured onto her. I told them I didn't want to see the videos but they told me that it was important to the case. What I ended up learning later was that, Lisa wasn't the only one. Lisa was one of the many victims of Ms. Donald. Later evidence proved that Ms. Donald had kidnapped other girls as well. Ms. Donald only targeted women that were around my age. There were countless videos of women being tied up and tortured, but they were for fun, Lisa was tortured because Ms. Donald wanted to find me. Ms. Donald took pleasure in hurting young women. She confessed why she wanted me so badly. The way she would walk into my class every day, head up high, dressed beautifully. She was the only student who cared about her grades. God, how I wish I could take her home every day. My husband and I would have enjoyed her so much. She confessed this the night she was convicted. I was never really sure about how it got out that she was kidnapping and torturing girls, but I do know that she didn't regret it at all. When asked if she had any regrets, on tape, she said, I regret none of that. These girls have been my main source of happiness for many years. I don't care if I live or die. I could not care any less what happens to me right now. Ms. Donald and her husband went on trial. Her husband got life in prison, while she got death. She came back to Jersey after she was put on a watch list in Iceland. Hi, I'm a long-time lurker of your channel and I finally found the motivation to put my own story here. I'm confident that it won't be of much help to my confusion but maybe some knowledgeable people will just stumble upon it. English isn't my first language unfortunately, so apologies for the faults in my writing. It happened several years ago, I was still in college back then. A pretty boring place, to be honest. Nowhere near as fun as my future days of lycée and without the nostalgia benefit of my days of primary school. It was a large, boring building, named after a famous writer. We had different teachers, one of them was Mr. Pupil. In spite of his name, it literally means, bad, in French, he was a pretty ordinary yet efficient teacher specialized in mathematics. Severe when he needed to be, but also funny at times. We liked him because he did his job without trying to be hip with the kids, like the professor of plastic arts and he wasn't a total bore like the professor of English. He was a pretty lean middle-aged man with thick glasses and a big mustache. He also had shaggy gray hair and wore gray clothes. A pretty generic, harmless looking professor. Harmless looking, as Andre found out. I'd call Andre a bully but he was more of a pest. He messed with people by taking their bags when they weren't looking, tripped people in queues and did his best to irritate people in classes. He wasn't some kind of violent bully, mind you, just an annoying little shit. I stood up to him sometimes but that was mostly to try and impress my crush, otherwise, we didn't interact much. He especially liked to try and taunt the teachers themselves, especially the older ones. Sometimes, he played music on his brand new iPad, hiding it below his desk and then cutting off the music when the teacher finally turned around. At other times, he got his friends to sneak inside the room and sit down, waiting for the teacher to realize what was happening. Yeah, some of my teachers weren't that bright. But Mr. Pupil was thorough in calling him out every single time, and he was quicker than the other professors with that. This caused Andre to try his hand again and again though. Perhaps he wanted to finally trick his school nemesis or perhaps he just wanted to see how much he could push his luck. He did eventually push his luck one fateful day, when he tried to pull the iPad trick on Mr. Pupil. I was sitting right next to him at that moment, 
refusing to call him out because I knew that Mr. Pupil would catch on. He did, but this time, he just kind of, stared. Then he walked up to Andre, without calling him out or anything. His young adversary himself was quite confused at that, especially when Mechant just casually grabbed his iPad, tore it out of his hands in a swift motion and just, laid it out on Andre's desk. Then, he pointed at me. Matthew, step back, please. He waited for a moment and then grabbed Andre's hair before violently smashing his face against the screen of the device. Andre bellowed, grabbing at his bloody nose, and the rest of the class shrieked in horror as well. Mr. Pupil just kind of shrugged and grabbed Andre by the jaw and the hair yet again, before tossing him towards the door. Now, Andre was young, but he still worked out and was pretty heavyset. Mr. Pupil was an adult but he was thin and nothing indicated that he could toss Andre around with such ease. He proceeded to look at us, smiling. Not a joker like Rictus mind you, or some kind of monstrous toothy smile. A perfectly human grin. He had been looking forward to this moment. Please, remain calm. We'll have to speed up on Pythagore after this, he explained, before calmly walking towards Andre, who regained his bearings enough to stumble out of the room. Mr. Pupil followed him and closed the door behind him, before clearly locking it. We were all reeling in shock, especially because we could hear Andre's painful screams outside. Now, he was kind of a jerk, but he did not deserve this kind of brutal beatdown. We kind of ran around like headless chickens at that point. Several minutes later, Mr. Pupil came back, along with the principal, named Mr. Onde. And Andre, though healed, to our surprise. His hair was fine again after Mr. Pupil ripped out huge clumps of it, his nose was fine, his skin was devoid of the shards of his ruined iPad, and he was calm, briskly walking along with the person who nearly beat him to death minutes ago. The principal sat down and so did we. The excitement from earlier was gone for a reason that I can't explain. Something very unfortunate happened, said Mr. Onde, I'm aware that you will report this to your parents or the authorities, why, I'm sure that some of you already did with those phones of yours, he said. The principal was a balding old man. Usually, he was pretty boring, but I remember that his voice was laced with something sinister, almost echo why. This establishment thrives on the perfect communication of its residents. And if your parents and the authorities get involved, this communication will get troubled, so, I will have to ask you not to speak of this to anyone. In exchange, Mr. Pupil will not get, passionate again, finished Mr. Onde, glaring at the teacher. At this point, everything became a bit fuzzy, and I just found myself walking back home. The police never investigated the schools, parents seemingly remained uninformed, Andre went back to being a little shit and Mr. Pupil's violent side never emerged again. The rest of my life remained empty of bizarre events. I had the time of my life in Lycée, married my crush, got a kid, got a job in the government and, well, just boring stuff. Though recently, something came along to trouble our quiet and peaceful life. See, I only remembered the beating and all recently, for most of my life, that one day was boring and normal like any other. And when I mentioned it to my wife, she said the same thing too. We looked into it and read that Mr. Onde passed away very recently, right before we recovered that part of our memories. And apparently, Andre passed away at nearly the same time as well. I don't know if I will ever find the true meaning of this. I've had some of my former classmates contact me to try and use my connections to find the real meaning of this, but I'm afraid of getting my family entangled in some kind of supernatural death trap. My wife agreed about not trying to find out at least. I'm posting this here so that people may perhaps investigate on their own and discover what exactly happened. Because I'm not involving myself any further in this. Good luck and stay safe.